Hey guys, Vertigo here again. Today we'll be collecting and playing with botanicals. Down here in Australia, autumn comes to us in March, April and May. Around this time of the year is when I do most of my botanical collecting. Botanicals are a variety of fallen dried plant materials like leaves and seed pods that can be used in aquariums and terrariums. In the wild, many habitats are littered with these fallen materials which are beneficial to animal inhabitants. They can serve as foods for invertebrates, fungi and bacteria which break down dead plant material and turn them into detritus and soil. They also provide hiding places for many small shy animals. And in the instance of aquatics, they leach tannins into the water, staining the water a tea colour and lowering the pH. While also providing a dark, calming environment for fish suited for blackwater habitats. Over the past few years, there has been a trend towards creating more naturalistic biotopes, especially blackwater environments, which moves away from the traditional manicured style of aquascaping. Many stores and companies around the world have popped up supplying these botanicals, making biotopes easier to create and better looking than ever before. But once again, things are a little different in Australia. We don't have any aquarium companies like Tannin Aquatics to supply us with cool looking seed pods all year round. This might be due to the fact that it's very hard to import these kinds of plant materials into Australia. Quarantine matters. Maybe I can get some alder cones or some Indian almond leaves, but that's pretty much it for variety. If I want interesting, varied botanicals, I have to collect them locally myself, and it proves to be a bit of a challenge. Trees drop their leaves and seed pods seasonally, such as oaks and maples for leaves every autumn, and kurujong pods every late summer. This video has taken a long time for me to create because I can't just collect botanicals at any time of the year. I have to wait for the ideal time, weather and place to find them. The first step is finding the right trees. I live in suburban Melbourne, Australia, so there's a good chance that no matter where I go, there's going to be some pollution. I'm going to do my best to stick to parks and away from roads, but there might be some exceptions to this, and I'll show you how I process and clean my botanicals to reduce the risk of hurting my animals. On my phone, I keep reference pictures I find online of what to look for, specifically what the leaves or seed pods look like. I use Tannin Aquatics as a reference for what is already known to be safe in aquariums. This is my second year collecting botanicals, so I already know where to find most of my ideal trees and I know that they're safe to collect from because I've been using them with my shrimp previously. In a local park, I found some Australian she oak trees and some of their seed pods. These are tough and kind of prickly to the touch. I wouldn't keep this with anything like a long finned fish since they could tear them, but these seed pods are otherwise safe to use for other things. I didn't find very many today, but I've already collected some earlier this year. Next up, we're hitting up some city parks and botanic gardens for some oak and maples. From oaks we get leaves and acorn caps, and from maple trees I'll just be taking the leaves. I only take fully intact dried fallen leaves from the ground. It's important to make sure that there isn't any fungus or bird poop on the leaves because those certainly won't be good for fish and shrimp. We're going to get Kurujong seed pods next. They are a native tree found in a lot of places in Australia. Unfortunately, in my area, the only place I know of that has these kinds of trees is the parking lot of a local shopping centre. As you can see, it's very empty today because it's a public holiday. I don't like to take pods from trees near the actual parking lot. They are definitely very polluted and it's dangerous to be hunching to pick stuff from the floor especially in a busy, busy parking lot. Don't do that. Instead, I go to the edges away from a lot where there isn't as much car contact and while it's not perfect, I've hit the jackpot of Kurujong pods. It doesn't really matter if there are still seeds inside these as long as they're from the ground. However, the seeds do make it a little annoying to clean though. I'm only going to collect a few bunches since I already collected a lot earlier this season. That's that for collecting. Here's my haul. This is supposed to last me and all of my tanks and animals until the next year. As botanicals and aquariums age, they will eventually break down into mom and detritus. 
and you'll need to replace or add new botanicals occasionally to maintain the aesthetic of the tank. So think ahead and collect what you need, otherwise you'll be waiting for the next season. We can't just plot these botanicals into our aquariums yet though, they need to be cleaned and processed. Who knows what these have been exposed to, possible herbicides, pollution, feces, anything that could harm aquarium and terrarium inhabitants. First, I take everything and soak it for about one hour in salt water solution. This is a technique that I've learned from Mark's shrimp tanks. I'll put a link to the video in the description about that. As he mentions in his video, this doesn't 100% remove everything from these botanicals, but it will remove most herbicide or pesticides if there are any present. After the one hour soak, everything is thoroughly rinsed out. I make sure to remove the seeds and inner lining of the Kurojong seed pods, which is a really laborious process. My hands always hurt by the time I'm done with them, so I'm really glad I didn't get very many this time. Once everything is rinsed, it must be fully dried for storage. Depending on the weather, I dry them on a very low heat in the oven, which is about 75 degrees Celsius or 160 degrees Fahrenheit. But if there's a lot of sun and no rain in the coming days, I leave the botanicals out in the sun to dry. It's important that they are fully dry before storage. Otherwise, the leaves and pods will grow mold if they're slightly moist. I ended up drying most of mine in the oven. I had a lot more leaves than I had room to spread them outside, and the day was getting a bit late already. In the oven, it takes about 10 minutes to dry a batch of leaves, whereas it can take hours to sun dry them. The end result is a lot of brittle and dry ready to use leaves. Just look at how stunning they are already. Now that all the leaves and seed pods are dried, I store them in containers and bags in a cool dry place until I want to use them. If you have bits of leaves and pods breaking off like these, keep them. They can still be used as little accents and leaf litter even if they're small and broken. After all, nature isn't full of perfect whole leaves. Now the botanicals that I do end up using are boiled for about 10 to 15 minutes to help them sink. This also further removes any possible dirt and nasties. I let them cool down and then I put them wherever I want in the aquarium. And that's what I've been doing since last year and so far it has worked very well with no problems. Just remember to be mindful of what type of leaves you collect and where you collect them from and then process them thoroughly like I've done to avoid contamination. If you happen to be in an area or country that doesn't have a commercial store that provides botanicals for pet use, all hope is not lost. Get outdoors and get collecting. It's great for your own health and I'm sure your animals will thank you too. This has been Vertigo. I will see you next time.